Hello everyone uh, at Auto Gefühl. My name is Simon. Uh, I'm a physicist and I'm working with Audi on the Audi A7 piloted uh, driving concept. And today I want to show you a little bit how it works and try to answer your questions. So the first trick is manual driving up to the highway. We're going from uh, Ingolstadt towards Nuremberg for a few kilometers so that I can show you whatever the car is capable of. Probably can't really see anything of the HMI concept, so maybe I can explain it. So we have two buttons here on the steering wheel. They will light up green if the car is ready to take the control from the driver. We have an LED bar covering the root of the, of the windshield. And well, basically we have a, a different combi uh, as well. And here we have the CSI display telling the driver <clears throat> how much time we have left in uh, autonomous driving mode. with the highway and right after entry ramps the car will probably allow us to, to activate. Maybe you can see that as well so if the steering wheel is pretty far out and the moment I activate the car it will pull back basically a sign of giving me more room to do whatever I want for example working on my laptop or reading a book or playing with my phone. All right. Have you heard the sound? So basically the system is telling me okay I'm ready, uh, you can give me the control, I'm doing that now. So, uh, pressing the two buttons and off we go. You see that the steering wheel is going back away from me, so giving, giving me more room. And yeah, I think the first question was pretty much what can the car do? So, the most basic thing the car is doing is obviously keeping the lane and keeping distances to other cars. So we all know that from ACC systems and maybe from lane assist, except for that the car is not asking me to actually keep my hands on the wheel. And what you saw right now, or maybe you didn't see it, I'm not sure, is that the car was doing a lane change. So actually uh, there are a lot of sensors giving us a 360 degree view all around the car, allowing us to do lane changes, which is pretty convenient on the, on the highway. I really don't have to do anything anymore. I can really relax, sit back and do whatever I want. Uh, additionally, the car will also make room for really pressing cars when I'm on left lanes. Uh, the car will know the speed limits from the base map and also from the camera. So maybe just a few words to the sensor setup. So we have a camera here, mono camera right now, seeing the lane markings, which is basically responsible for left foot control. And then we have uh, the serious production radar in front. It's two sensors, long range radars. Uh, radars. <clears throat> then we have a laser scanner in front which is pre-series production, the same thing in the back. And in all four corners we have uh, mid-range radars, basically for the, for the side uh, perception. That allows us to safely do lane changes. Uh, and since the system is always paying attention, it's, it's really pretty safe. Unlike a human driver who's actually not always paying attention. The ultimate goal of, of this, all this, is obviously creating safety in situations where the driver is, is actually not really paying attention. You all know this situation where you're on the highway and everything is so boring that you really stop paying attention and this, the system is always paying attention and that really helps a lot in that moment. Next thing is obviously comfort. It's, there are situations where you don't really want to enjoy your Audi, you just, you just want to get from A to B and maybe even work on your laptop or text or whatever, which is obviously not possible now, but that might be in the future. Uh, and finally, of course, the system can be very efficient, so uh, slopes, whatever we have, we can incorporate in the system and, and really be fuel efficient. And of course, you make good use of your time, so you will be more efficient as well. These are the goals of, of this auto autonomous driving. Okay, some people feel like they are losing control or being dominated by technology or maybe even losing the fun to drive themselves. What do you think about that? Well, that doesn't apply at all here because uh, you can always take the control back. So if I think, okay, this car is really going too slow, I just get my hands on the wheel and do a lane change and go full throttle and the system will pull back right away and I, I'll be in control. And the moment I feel bored again, I just press the button, steering wheel goes back, so I can just take control whenever I want to and enjoy my, my car. Okay, how does um, do these tests help you to further develop the um, autonomous driving? 
Well, I mean, first of all, it's probably right now these tests we do and the journalist showcase we do is uh, most likely helping us and people accepting systems like that. That's probably the biggest benefit right now. Of course, uh, politicians, they, they see that this will be coming, this will be a, a thing of the future. So like Dobrindt was driving this car, the traffic minister of Belgium was driving this car and uh, they're making this A9 test ground for car makers in Germany. So this is really kind of useful for us. Okay, sorry for the limited time. Uh, we have a pretty tight schedule. I hope I could answer all the questions you had and uh, I find it out of the food. We develop and we test our cars with our technology currently in Germany. So we use also, for instance, the highway that we have in front of our, uh, of our factory and of our R&D development here in Ingolstadt. The A9, for the one who knows in Germany the A9, we use it for, our, for the development of our functionalities. When we talk about pilot driving on the highway, uh, we are facing different and also new challenges. One of them for in, is specifically the higher speed. If you drive on a highway on a higher speed, of course, you need to be uh, on, on a different strategy. You need to forecast much better what will be happening in front of you, or especially for German highways, talking about cars that are coming from the back on a higher speed than you, you need to forecast that in your whole strategy. Another very important thing on a highway is that you need to foresee and get the information up front of a specific incidents that could be on a highway like an accident or a traffic jam end where you want to get to a safe stop. The A7 that you see Jack is based on a normal A7 as you can buy it in the dealer. What we put in this car uh, on top of that is uh, some new sensor technologies like uh, a high performance 3D camera. We also have in the front and in the back a new sensor, it's a laser scanner sensor that we need uh, to scan the front and the back of the car. And talking about computing power and central unit, we have in the boot of the car, we have a pre-development uh, technology that we use for that specific development.
Audi is a pioneer of piloted driving, a success story in seven milestones. In 2009, Audi is the first car maker to test piloted driving in the desert. A TTS drives over the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, USA, and sets a world record for self-driving vehicles with a speed of approximately 210 kilometers per hour. 2010, Pikes Peak, an extremely challenging hill climb in the U.S. An Audi TTS without driver races 12 miles and 156 turns via differential GPS with a precision of only a few centimeters. The 2013 CES in Las Vegas, Audi receives the license for driverless driving in Nevada. Audi delivers an impressive demonstration of everyday practicality in real-world tests of driving in a traffic jam and parking. Audi exhibits the next generation of piloted driving at the 2014 CES. The driver assistance module ZFAS is now only the size of a laptop and another milestone on the road to production readiness. In August and September 2014, Florida and California give their approval for piloted driving testing. Audi conducts exhaustive tests on the highways. October 2014, an Audi RS7 is to complete a lap around the Grand Prix circuit at the Hockenheim Ring without a driver. A top performance at the limit, which on the high-speed circuit requires the utmost precision to succeed. The green flag is waved. Bobby is absolutely away. The first piloted car here at the Hockenheim Ring with Audi. This RS7 accelerates as the tens of thousands of fans here witness history in the making from Audi piloted driving. The absolute optimum lap as the car comes to a stop now. That was truly awesome. January 2015, an Audi A7 Sportback piloted driving concept drives from San Francisco to Las Vegas. A true long distance test as long as 560 miles. The A7 brakes, accelerates, changes lanes and passes other cars on the highway without a driver being involved. Journalists were impressed of the reliability of piloted driving at Audi. Also beim pilotierten Fahren testen wir und entwickeln wir in Deutschland. Wir fahren auch mit unseren Fahrzeugen hier in Ingolstadt auf der Autobahn 9 zum Beispiel, nutzen auch die Infrastruktur, die wir hier haben und entwickeln auch die Funktionen, die wir haben, auch hier in diesem Umfeld in Deutschland. Auf deutschen Autobahnen haben wir neue Aufgaben zu lösen, wenn wir pilotiertes Fahren auf der Autobahn entwickeln und umsetzen wollen, im Vergleich zum Beispiel zum Staupiloten, den wir gezeigt haben im kleinen Geschwindigkeitsbereich. Das eine ist die Geschwindigkeit. Wenn man schneller fährt, muss man vorausschauender fahren, man muss Situationen vorausschauender erkennen, wie zum Beispiel Autos, die einem schnell überholen. Und äh, man muss auch viel frühzeitiger auf Hindernisse zum Beispiel reagieren, die vor einem stehen, sei es eine Wanderbaustelle oder ein Unfall zum Beispiel. Also der A7, der baut auf einen Serien A7 auf, wie man den normal beim Händler kaufen kann. Was wir zusätzlich in diesem Fahrzeug umgesetzt haben, sind äh, innovative Sensortechnologien. Wir haben zum Beispiel eine hochperformante 3D-Kamera, die wir verwenden und ein ganz neuer Sensor, eine ganz neue Sensortechnologie, ein Laserscanner, den wir einmal nach vorne brauchen, den vorderen Bereich abzuscannen und einmal nach hinten, den wir brauchen, um zum Beispiel Spurwechsel sicher umsetzen zu können. Darüber hinaus äh, braucht man natürlich unglaublich hohe Rechenleistung, um dieses Fahrzeug pilotiert zu fahren. Und dazu gibt es im Kofferraum von diesem Auto die Vorentwicklungsplattform mit den Rechnern, die wir verwenden, um das einfach umzusetzen.